Let's use now this idea of heat capacity or a specific heat capacity and molar heat capacity to solve a problem. What we're going to see is we can actually quantify the change in internal energy based on how much stuff we've got and the change in temperature. And they're related by the heat capacity, either the molar heat capacity or the specific heat capacity. In this case, since the quantity of material is given in grams, we're going to use the specific heat capacity. But if we had the number of moles, we would use the molar heat capacity. So it's a matter of convenience. The problem we're going to solve is calculate the change in energy as heat transferred when, and this is change in internal energy of the system, when a cup of coffee, so here's my cup of coffee, cools from 70 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to assume that it has the same molar heat capacity as water. Does that make sense? It's not bad because if we evaporated all of the water off of this cup of coffee, we'd probably have hardly anything. There's a little bit of, of flavoring and stuff like that, but mostly this is water. And so lots of times you will, in working problems, make the assumption that the the specific heat or molar heat capacity of your solution is exactly equal to that of pure water. Okay, so first of all, we're going to use, oh, look at that. We're going to actually convert to the number of moles, okay? So we're going to then use the molar heat capacity. We have the moles of water is equal to the number of grams of water times one mole over 18.0 grams. That's the molar mass of water, and so that gives us 13.9 moles of water. And the equation that relates heat evolved or absorbed, that's Q, and how much stuff we've got N, and the change in temperature delta T, and the heat capacity, in this case it's the heat capacity at constant pressure, is this equation. And we're not going to go through and derive this equation, but we can think about whether or not this equation makes any sense. It says that the heat evolved or absorbed directs, uh, depends directly on the change in temperature. That means, for instance, if the change in temperature is very large, for instance taking water and heating it up, then the higher we heat the temperature of the water, the, the more heat we have to put in. That makes sense. Um, and it says that if we have more stuff, more moles of water, then for the same change in temperature, we'd have to put more energy in. That makes sense as well. And then the things that relate these two quantities to the heat evolved or absorbed is the molar heat capacity. So we can plug in. We have that the number of moles is 13.9. And the molar heat capacity of water is 75.3 joules per mole degree Celsius. And the change in temperature, which is final temperature minus initial temperature, 50 degrees Celsius minus 70 degrees Celsius. And so we end up with that when our cup of coffee cools from 70 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius, and intuitively it makes sense that the change in internal energy should be lower, excuse me, should be less than zero, we get that Q is a negative quantity, which makes sense with our sign convention. It says that um, E delta E is equal to Q plus W. If we think that delta E should be a negative quantity, it makes sense that Q should be a negative quantity. Now, it actually is important to understand why we would want to focus on heat rather than work. And it's purely because of experimental simplicity. It's actually possible to have the change in internal energy be entirely expressed as heat evolved or absorbed. How could we get that situation? Well, here's our expression for the change in internal energy. Again, it's equal to the heat uh, transferred plus the work done. And we've found an expression for the work done, which is minus P external times delta V. Suppose we keep the volume constant. So in other words, delta V is going to be equal to zero. How do you keep the volume constant for a system? You put it in an entirely rigid container that doesn't allow the system to change its volume. Then delta V is going to be equal to zero. And in fact, this whole piece right here, minus P external, external delta V, is going to be exactly equal to zero. And so it's possible then to see that the change in internal energy can be purely expressed experimentally as the heat evolved or absorbed at constant volume. And 
This is an experimentally doable thing. And we're going to talk about it later on. It's called constant volume calorimetry. So now, why do we want to worry about delta E? Well, delta E is a state function, remember. It says something really intrinsic about a particular reaction. And so knowing something about that particular reaction by being able to do an experiment tells us a lot about that system. In fact, it's so important that we define two new quantities. And those two new quantities are when Q is greater than 0, so when the heat evolved or absorbed is greater than 0. In other words, in this case, since Q is greater than 0, its heat is being absorbed by the system, we say that the system is endothermic. Excuse me, we say that the reaction is endothermic. And conversely, if Q is less than 0, so in this case, heat is being transferred from the system to the surroundings, we say that the reaction is exothermic. And these two ideas of endothermicity and exothermicity are going to become even more important when we talk about enthalpy. And enthalpy is coming up.